Hey guys, I'm Mike, and I live in New York, so I don't really get a chance to drive much, but I love to live vicariously through the dark night and his badass Batmobile. I want a car. Chicks dig the car. This is why Superman works alone. In comics and cartoons, you don't have to worry about stuff like physics and engineering when you're designing your bat car, but it's a much different story in real life. So let's explore how filmmakers throughout the years have conquered Gotham's gridlock with a look at the Batmobile's live action evolution. In the early years of the comic, the Batman stocked the streets in a plain red roadster, but as the character evolved, so did his taste. By 1941, Bruce was patrolling Gotham in a slick black car with batwing tail fins and a custom grill in the shape of his mask. It looked iconic, intimidating, and above all, expensive, which is why they didn't even bother recreating it for the 1940s serials. Let's go. I mean, they didn't even have the budget for proper fitting costumes, so you know they weren't willing to shell out for a custom ride. 1943's Batman used an old Cadillac convertible to get around, and the even cheaper Batman and Robin cereal downgraded that to a Mercury. What's wrong? Both Batmobiles were convertible straight off the showroom floor, and Bruce used the same car in his civilian life as he did in costume. <laughs> well, get the car. We have a delivery to make. The only difference being that when the top was up, crime was down. The first custom Batmobile was created for the 1966 TV series. A routine question. Have you recently sold any war surplus submarines, and if so, to whom? After a schedule shakeup, designer George Barris had only three weeks and $30,000 to create one of pop culture's most important icons. He didn't have time to start from scratch, but he had the next best thing, a prototype show car called the Lincoln Futura. Although the Futura is still a long way from the production line, the stylists are looking far beyond to a car that might operate on exotic fuels and electrical power. Today it looks like something Homer Simpson would design, but at the time this thing was the height of 50s futurism. It cost Ford a quarter of a million dollars to build, which is about, about two million in today's money. But after the public lost their taste for gigantic cars that looked like rocket ships, they sold it to Barris for a dollar. With its bubble dome and tail fins, the Futura already had a sci-fi look, and it only took some minor tweaks to convert it into the Batmobile. Barris changed the fins and the paint job, threw in gadgets like the Bat Phone and Quick Turn Parachutes, and added the iconic rear rocket engine. Atomic batteries to power, turbines to speed. He built the original atomic turbine out of an old paint can, and it's been a feature of every Batmobile since. In 2013, Barris auctioned off the original for like a cool five million. Well, that's okay, Sean. We all have the right to be selfish sometimes. For decades, Barris's legendary design was the definitive Batmobile. At least until 1989, when we were introduced to a darker, more dangerous car by Tim Burton. Burton's Batman and Batman Returns were set in a stylistic world that was equal parts Fritz Lang and Frank Miller. British production designer Anton First won an Oscar for his work on the film, including a Baroque new Batmobile. He envisioned the car as a set of shining armor that was as integral to Batman's character as his cape and cowl. First and his crew had five months to build a state-of-the-art automobile from the ground up, something that actual car companies take about a decade to do. They use a heavily modified 1974 Chevy Impala frame as a foundation and hand-sculpted an aerodynamic Kevlar body inspired by Lope profile hot rods from the 1930s. The paint job looks black on screen, but six different layers of color were used to give the Batmobile an organic three-dimensional appearance. The final design was unlike anything we'd ever seen before, and it wasn't the most practical. Batman's ears were actually too long to fit inside the cockpit, so the costume department had to whip up a brand new cowl for driving scenes. Other than that slight hiccup, this car was fully functional, and so were its wonderful, wonderful toys. In a flash, it's a high-powered bat missile. Two 9mm Browning machine guns emerged from the sides, while a rear-mounted grappling hook helped the car turn tight corners. Even the afterburner was real, although it was so dangerous it could only be fired for 15 seconds at a time. Special effects were only necessary when the Batmobile armored up. 
and it used stop motion in the first movie and CGI in Batman Returns. Burton's Batmobile inspired everything from the dope animated series Batmobile to OnStar commercials. OnStar, how can I help you, Batman? And it set a high bar for bat card design. Let's look at the two versions created by Burton's replacement, director Joel Schumacher. He wanted to steer the series back towards the campiness of the Adam West show, so I'm not exactly sure why he hired alien artist H.R. Giger to design his new Batmobile. Giger's design was a purple X-shaped monstrosity that looked like a cross between intestines and a pair of scissors. It's a cool concept, but I'm not sure it would have fit in the same world as Bat Nipples and Jim Carrey's ridiculous Riddler. Was that over the top? I can never tell. Geiger left the film, but the final Batmobile still had the organic feel that Schumacher was going for. He was inspired by a leather fetish magazine, <laughs> of all places. The entire vehicle is ribbed for our pleasure with the gigantic and practical bat wings that actually look pretty close to some of the early comic designs from the 40s. I can't say the same about all the lights. Apparently they were inspired by bioluminescent sea creatures, but all I see is too fast, too furious. Too wide. Also, I appreciate the fact that the bat logos on the wheels are always right side up. But is it really something Bruce Wayne would give a shit about? No. For the sequel, Schumacher wanted a Batmobile with a little more screen presence, which is why the car in Batman and Robin is even more over the top. It's got six rocket nozzles instead of one, two gigantic tail fins, and at 30 feet, it's the longest Batmobile ever built, and subsequently, also holds the least amount of people. Another unique feature is its lack of a passenger seat. Batman sits alone in a one-man cockpit while Robin rides alongside in his Red Bird motorcycle. Chicks might dig the car, but no one dug Batman or Robin. It literally killed the Batman franchise for nearly a decade until it was revived with a back to basics take by director Christopher Nolan. Nolan's desire for a realistic Batman extended to his car too. On well, the tumbler? Oh, you wouldn't be interested in that. He sculpted his initial Batmobile design out of Play-Doh and handed it off to designer Nathan Crowley to flesh it out into a finished vehicle. Crowley started out by kit bashing using parts from various model kits to piece together Nolan's vision. It's got bits of stealth bomber in it, it's got bits of Lamborghinis, bits of Hummers and all different things put together in this marvelous combination. Which is why the car's rocket engine looks like the nose cone of a P-38 fighter plane. Once the design was finalized, Crowley's crew sculpted a full-size replica out of styrofoam, but then he had to make a fully functioning car out of it. Spoiler alert, he did. <laughs> Nolan set some pretty steep requirements for his Batmobile. It had to go from 0 to 60 in 6 seconds, turn the narrow Chicago street corners at top speed, and pull off an unaided 30 foot jump. So what do you think? Does it come in black? It took 9 months and millions of dollars, but you know what? Crawley pulled it off. I gotta get me one of those. The Tumblr became the definitive bat car for a new generation, despite the word Batmobile never once appearing in Nolan's trilogy. For the Dark Knight, the design stayed the same, but we learned about some awesome new functionality. In a throwback to the Bat Missile mode from Batman Returns, Bruce can transform the Tumblr into a sleek motorcycle known as the Bat Pod. With two thick tires on rotating frames and heavy machine guns that are perfect for blowing Bane away. After The Dark Knight Rises, DC rebooted Batman to fit with their wider cinematic universe in the DCEU. So designer Patrick Tatopoulos came up with a car that reflected Zack Snyder's beastlier bat. Coming in at 20 feet long, 12 feet wide, and over 8,000 pounds, the DCEU Batmobile was never supposed to be pretty. Inspired by The Dark Knight Returns, it's a dirty, down-to-business tank with gigantic wheels made from shaved-down tractor tires, along with electrified skin, dozens of rockets, and 50 caliber machine guns that shoot rubber bullets. Honest. Kids these days. No respect. After Batman v Superman and Suicide Squad, the Dark Knight got an upgrade just in time for the invasion in Justice League. The new Nightcrawler isn't so much a car as it is a giant mechanical spider. I can't really see him cruising around Gotham in this thing, but it's perfect for shooting down swarms of parademons. I'll take it from here. Whether it's climbing skyscrapers or ripping up the road, Batman has always had the right ride for any occasion. Right now, there's a lot we don't really know about the future of the franchise. Will Ben Affleck continue to don the cape and cowl, or will we get another reboot along with a brand new Batmobile? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. That's not Batman. That's Batboy. <laughs>
No matter what happens, it's clear that the Caved Crusader's car has become an icon several times over, and any new design will have to clear the high bar already set by the live action legacy of the Batmobile. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching. If you like this look into sci-fi tech, let us know in the comments what gadgets we should cover next. We're thinking either Spidey's web shooters, Iron Man's armor, or Star Wars spaceships. Anyway, let us know which one you'd prefer, or better yet, leave us your ideas in the comments, and as always, please subscribe to Now This Nerd.